Hello boys and girls. Today I would like to tell you about one of my favorite examples of character and honesty and courage and he happened to be a teacher. His name is Booker T. Washington and I'm getting my information mainly from some of the research I've done online but also, after reading this book called Booker T. Washington, Ambitious Boy, it's written by Augusta Stevenson. It is not an accelerated reader book, but such a very good read. The first thing I want to tell you about, well, this is a picture of Booker T. His name is Booker Talaferro Washington. He was born on April the 5th. 1856 in Virginia and his parents his mother was Jane and uh, not really sure if her last name was Washington probably not um, she was born a slave so slaves didn't have last names at that time um, and Ferguson was his father they and his father was also born a slave And a part of Booker's childhood, uh, Booker, since his parents were born into slavery, he was also. And his mother, Jane, lived on the Burroughs Plantation in Virginia. His father uh, had been moved to a different plantation. And uh, later on, he's going to come into the story. He's going to live in uh, West Virginia. Actually, this was his stepfather, his real father. We really don't know what happened to him. Um, the first, one of the first chapters in the story talked about one of his inventions. He created the fly contraption, and uh, Booker loved to invent new things and had uh, these ideas to make things better. And so they would always have to. Uh, stand over the table at the plantation while uh, the people in the big house were eating lunch or supper and they would have to uh, use these fans and and chew the flies away well he came up with an idea he made a wooden frame and he had uh, straps of little dangling paper and it was held up by two chains and it had a rope that he could pull and it would uh, dangle that paper and it would scare the flies away so he got to be the fly boy he would sit on a stool and with that rope and every night at supper time he would uh, sit in there with the family and he would pull the rope whenever the flies would come around and this he learned a lot of things by sitting in that room with the family and miss clara was the main one that uh, she was the mistress of the house and she was very kind to him and tried to help him as much as she could and she had uh, children at that time this was the civil war so she had um, her older boys were in the war itself. Uh, the picture on the screen is a replica of one of the houses on the Burrell Plantation. Now, the house that uh, Booker and his family lived in was basically a shack that had um, holes, that had dirt floor with holes in it for sweet potatoes and there were no glass in the windows just a, a hole in the wall and they even had a place for um, a catwalk where a cat could crawl through and even though they didn't own a cat and um booker was considered probably the smartest boy on the plantation because of his inventions and things he loved to learn and since he was being raised during the Civil War time, um, he he had some responsibilities that a lot of kids didn't have. He went with one of the other slaves called Sam to the post office one day 
and this is this was an eye-opening event for him because this was the first time that he had gotten to see a newspaper and he went to get the mail with him and so he the Sam decided that he wanted to stick around a little while and listen to the white men reading these newspapers and this is how he learned a lot of news to take back to the borough plantation and he would tell uh, a lot of other families what was going on in the Civil War and in the story Captain Billy kept Billy was Miss Clara's son and he was a captain in the Confederate Army so he was uh, it described him in the story as wearing a gray uniform so I have a picture of the uh, Confederate uniform and it said it was a lot harder to see that gray uniform than it was the uh, dark blue uniform of the Union soldiers. So I have a picture of the Union soldiers uh, uniform also. And Captain Billy had kind of deserted from his uh, troops. He kind of snuck away so that he could get message to his mom and his family. And uh, Billy saw him and talked to him and he needed a place to hide because the Yankee soldiers were in town and if he was anywhere they could see him they would capture him so uh, Booker put him in a hollow uh, oak tree it was by a certain creek close to the plantation and uh, Captain Billy thought that was a great hiding place and he gave him the message to give to his mom Miss Clara that she needed to get the children away from the plantation and send them to um, a family member that was farther away so that they would be safe from the Yankee soldiers that they were coming and he also wanted her to hide the uh, family silver that had been in the family for a couple of generations and they needed to bury, bury it because if they tried to hide it in the house uh, the Yankee soldiers were actually going around burning houses and it would either get burnt up or it would be um, stolen so Miss Clara uh, took her children on a trip to one of the relatives and Jane and Booker and his brother John went with her and and Booker had the idea to hide the silver close to the tree where she had hid her son Billy and uh, Miss Clara liked that idea because it made her feel closer to her son now it wasn't too much longer after that that uh, two of her sons John and Henry Miss Claire's sons were shot in the war and they had secretly come home and they were sneaking food out of the uh, supper time so since Booker was the flyboy and was sitting in there he noticed them taking food out but he didn't understand why so his mother Jane had been getting up in the middle of the night to cook supper which didn't make any sense because she didn't normally do that and so he asked her why she was up cooking was she feeling bad and she explained to him that John and Henry were there and they were hiding him and they were she was feeding them gruel but that wasn't gonna make them any stronger they really needed some meat and they didn't have any chickens because Miss Clara told them to kill all the chickens and eat them so that the Yankee soldiers wouldn't have anything to eat when they got there and they had so they didn't have any eggs or chicken or any kind of meat to to give these uh, these boys and so uh, they at that time they could hear these frogs croaking and calling for rain and Booker said man they sound good enough to eat and then he got the idea to oh he could go frog hunting so he kind of he got his pail and he got a, a spear and a, and a torch 
and he would blind the frogs with that torch light, and they would stay still, and he would bonk them on top of the head and put them in his pail. Every time that he would hit one on the head, he would say, this one's for John, this one's for Henry, this one's for John, this one's for Henry. Well, he didn't realize that he was being watched by uh, Union spies that were dressed up like farmers. They didn't have their blue uniforms on. And they grabbed a hold of Booker and they threatened him, trying to make him tell them where the treasure was, where the silver was hidden, because they knew they'd been spying and looking through the window, and they knew it wasn't in the house, and they wanted to know how many people were there. And Booker was very creative when he told them as little as possible that they wanted him to lead them to... Uh, where they had hid the silver and he decided to lead them down an opposite path that went to the swamp and when he got to the swamp and they started getting getting stuck because they couldn't pick their feet up he blew out the torchlight and left them in the swamp and ran back and warned Miss Clara about the Yankees and what all they knew so he's he has already saved Miss Clara and her family's life a couple of times by this point. Now at this time, during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln is president, and he has given the uh, Gettysburg Address on emancipation, and he has freed the slaves. And the war ended in April of 1865. It went from April 1861 to April of 1865. So it was a long four-year war. And soon after the war, he was shot and died. And uh, the freed slaves on the plantations, some of them had left. Some of them didn't want to leave. Uh, most of them didn't know what to do um, or what to do if they ever got out there in the world and how they were going to make it. So when Abraham Lincoln was shot, they felt like they had lost their best friend. Well, at this time, Jane got a letter from Jim, uh, Booker's stepfather, telling her that he had a house in West Virginia in Malden so they were going to travel from Virginia to West Virginia it was a long way and Miss Clara gave them as much cornmeal and salt pork that's bacon uh, as much as she could and put them on this one little cart and the mules and the boys they they couldn't fit in the cart. There was only room for a driver and the little sister. And they had all their other worldly goods. They didn't have a lot in this little cart. And so the boys would walk and the mom, Jane, would take turns with them. And along the way, they found uh, turtles and quail and rabbits and other, other little animals that they could kill and eat and they were extremely happy because uh, no one could make them work. Uh, no one could tell them what to do. They were free for the first time in their life. And they were just, they were just so relieved to be out of that, that situation. Well, when they got to West Virginia and they made it to Malden, and Jim is taking them to the house, they're expecting a house with a wood floor, and a house with glass window panes and they expected life to be so much better than it had been before. Well, the house that they had was the very same kind of house because Jim worked in the salt furnace, not making very much money and this was about all that he could afford. So they struggled to find enough of anything to eat. And Booker really, really wanted to go to school. He wanted to learn how to read. He just knew that that would be the way that he could uh, get a better job. 
But since Jim wasn't making enough to keep them afloat, his brother, uh, John, and he had to go to work at the salt furnace with Jim. Now, they did a very good job, and the owner of the salt furnace was watching them. At this time, because so many of the freed slaves had never bought anything, they never had to trade for anything, they didn't know the cost of, of anything. Um, they'd always been given certain food, and so they had to learn a lot about buying and trading and peddling and Booker's mom complained because uh, the peddlers would stop Jim and he would buy perfumes and toys and things that they really didn't need at the time but he wasn't used to learning how to say no to them now Jim he didn't understand how valuable education was and so Booker hadn't been able to go to school from at this point but then Jane had gone to church and she heard about this uh, freed slave from from the north and that he could read he was very well educated so she invited him to their house to read one night and a lot of other people heard about it young and old came and brought their stools and sat down and listened to him read the newspaper out loud and they were enraptured with every single word they didn't miss anything and after that was over Booker walked outside with him and told him I want to read like you so the man walked back in and talked to Jim and told him you know your sons John and Booker would make so much more money twice as much as they can in the salt furnace if you would just let them learn how to read and do math and other things too so he convinced Jim to let them go to school but they could only go part-time so they would get up and they would go to the salt furnace from early in the morning until about nine uh, in the morning and then they would go to school and then when they get out of school at four o'clock then they would work from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night and get up and do the whole thing all over again so that that would be a very long day for Booker and he was only about nine years old the first day that Booker went to school the teacher now this was a uh, this was a predominantly black school there was no there's no white children in the school and the teacher was not white um, so the teacher asked him what is your name and he said they call me Booker and he said no what is your full name and Booker said I don't have any other name but Booker and he said I know a lot of uh, freed slaves because slaves were not given last names they have to be creative and come up with one so Booker understood that he was wanting him to give himself a last name and he thought nah Smith Jones uh, no those were too small so he thought of the longest name that he could and he finally said Washington so that's how he became known as Booker Washington I'm not sure how much longer it took for him to come up with Talifera, which was his middle name. That was not in the story. There, not too much long after he had started school and started learning his alphabet, and learning how to read, do a little bit of figures. Jim was still struggling with money and made him quit going to school during the day and work full time. But he continued, uh, the teacher was very kind and gave him lessons for free at night. But then the teacher had to leave and go to a different school and Booker was left trying to figure out how he was going to learn even more. 
And so he finally found another teacher that would help him. And at the same time, he was helping his brother and sister learn how to read and write. Anything he would learn, he would bring home. And so uh, Malden got night classes and for um, slaves that had been freed. And these were free classes, but they had to work and go to school at night. It was a lot of a lot of time and Jim was still hampering him didn't really want him to do this didn't still didn't understand how valuable it was for Booker to learn and Booker continued anyway he his mother helped him by taking in laundry from others and would give him give him the money to go to school even though Booker was kind of frustrated with that because he didn't really want his mother wearing herself out, you know, and taking money from her that he didn't, he wasn't sure he'd ever be able to uh, pay her back. But she said, you're already paying me back. You're already teaching my other children. So it worked out. And Booker, he excelled at everything he tried. No matter what it was, if someone would teach him, he picked it up very quickly. Now, he went from working at the salt furnace to the coal mine at the age of 12. And he wore this little headlamp on his forehead. But he would, um, it was so dark in there that he would get lost a lot. And it was very scary. And he was miserable. They old timers the miners that had been there for a long time would help him when he would call but it just wasn't working for him and he overheard a couple of the other miners that were young boys that were planning to blow up the mine and when he heard this he eventually told the owner uh, about this and the owner appreciated his courage so much that he gave him a week off with pay. And when the owner's wife heard about this, she uh, let her gardener go, the one that kept her yard in the house, and she wanted to hire Booker. And she promised that she would pay him the $5 every week, the same amount that he would earn in the coal mines if she would if he would just help her in the house and the yard and she's the one that taught him how to really clean a house and how to dust and how to sweep and get it completely spotless and he learned so much about uh, trees and seeds and seedlings that he learned how to get seeds from peddlers and he learned how to plant and he brought these seeds home to uh, Jim and Jane's house at his home and basically turned it into a fairyland and he started his own little business of selling these seedlings and plants and this was another way that he could earn money he was an entrepreneur now he did hear from a preacher about this college in Virginia in the Hamptons and it was free to um, African Americans if they worked for on this uh, on the grounds cleaning and doing other things um, and they would get their room and board and their training by the work that they did but it was 500 miles away so he figured out it would cost him about $15 to make the trip. And this was when he was 15 years old. And he decided to uh, do everything he could and save money secretly in this old sock. And it took him about a year. And he heard from uh, Jane from the Burrow Plantation and his her son Tom which was his favorite, uh, was very, very sick and needed to go to the doctor, and it would cost $15. He ended up uh, sending the $15 he had saved 
to uh, Miss Clara for, for Tom to go to the doctor, and it saved his life. But Booker didn't have any money to go to college with. And Jane and the rest of the family scraped up money and uh, sent him on to the Hamptons when he was about 16 years old. And the first day, his exam, his entry exam was to clean a classroom. And so because of the gardener, gardening that he had learned from uh, the salt furnace's wife, the owner's wife, she taught him how to clean spotlessly. He made it through the interest exam because the professor came in with a white glove and didn't find any dirt anywhere. And after that, after he had become a college professor, he actually um, founded his own school in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1881, and it was called the Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute. And it was the same kind of school that he had been to in the Hamptons, where it was for poor people that needed to work um, and go to college at the same time. And they really didn't have any other money uh, to do this with. And there were several different trades that they could learn, uh, tinning and carpentry and mechanics and farming and 20 other trades. And, and girls could do this too. They would learn sewing and things like that that would help them become uh, better housekeepers or earn a business uh, as a seamstress. And sadly, Booker T. Washington died November the 14th, 1915. This was during uh, the beginning of World War I. I hope that you have enjoyed the life story of Booker T. Washington, and I hope that you can find someone to mentor yourself after, someone who has uh, strong morals and character that will help you to understand that your education is so very valuable and everything that you learn you will use later in life have a great day i miss you and love you and hope you are staying well goodbye